you so much for joining us this morning for a peep the cat party. My name is Miss Meredith and I'm going to read you two Pete the Cat stories today and I'm going to need a little bit of help from you to read some of these stories. Do any of you like Pete the Cat? I love Pete the Cat and I'm going to share my two very favorite Pete the Cat stories with you today. So the first one we're going to read is Pete the Cat, I Love My White Shoes. Here we go. Ready? Pete the cat was walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. Pete loved his white shoes so much that he sang this song. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Oh no! Can you say oh no? Oh no! Pete stepped in a large pile of strawberries. What color did it turn his shoes? What color would strawberries turn your shoes? <gasps> Red! Did Pete cry? Can you say goodness no? Goodness no! He kept walking along and singing his song. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. Can you say, oh no? Oh no! Pete stepped in a large pile of blueberries. What color did it turn his shoes? What color would blueberries turn his shoes? Blue! Did Pete cry? Can you say goodness no? Goodness no! He kept walking along and singing his song. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. Can you say, oh no? Oh no! Pete stepped in a large puddle of mud. What color did it turn his shoes? What color would mud turn your shoes? Brown. Did Pete cry? Goodness no! He kept walking along and singing his song. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. Oh no. Can you say oh no? Oh no! Pete stepped in a bucket of water. And all the red and all the blue and all the brown were washed away. What color were his shoes again? Do you remember what color his shoes were at the start of the story? His shoes were white, but now they were wet. Did Pete cry? Goodness no! He kept walking along and singing his song. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. The moral of Pete's story is, no matter what you step in, keep walking along and singing your song. Because it's all good. <laughs> What a fun one. That's a fun one to practice our colors. Our next Pete the Cat story has some counting. So if you want to practice some counting, now is a good time for that. This is Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons. And this is by, the art is by a man named James Dean. And the story is by Eric Litwin. So thank you to them for letting us read their totally groovy books. This is Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons. Let's see what happens in this one. 
here we go. Pete the Cat put on his favorite shirt with four big, colorful, round, groovy buttons. He loved his buttons so much that he sang this song. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. <gasps> Pop! You ready for your line again? It's the same. Oh no! One of the buttons popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Let's count them. One, two, three, three. Four minus one equals three. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. Pop! Ready? Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Let's count. One, two. Three minus one equals two. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. Pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Let's count them. One! Two minus one equals one. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My button, my button, my one groovy button. My button, my button, my one groovy button. Pop! Oh no! The last button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? If all the buttons popped off. Zero. One minus one equals zero. No more buttons. Did he cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt and what do you think he saw? His belly button. And he kept on singing his song. My button, my button, still have my belly button. My button, my button, still have my belly button. I guess it simply goes to show that stuff will come and stuff will go. But do we cry? Goodness, no. We keep on singing our song. Buttons come and buttons go. What a great story. That was such a fun one to practice our counting, a little bit of math, and some beautiful button colors. So speaking of colors, I know Miss Coley has a really fun art activity for you to try today. So if you stay tuned, you can try a Pete the Cat inspired art activity. Thanks so much and have fun watching. Bye. Boom, dicky, 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 boom, Thank you for joining us for our Pete the Cat party today. If you watched Miss Meredith's video, you got to hear two stories about one of our favorite characters, Pete the Cat. And today I'm going to show you an art project that you can do that goes along with these stories. So if you listened to the story where Pete wears his brand new white shoes and goes for a walk and steps in a bunch of different things and changes the color of his shoes, that's what this art project is going to be based on. So we're going to do some painting today with watercolors. For this project, you need watercolor paints. 
Um, you need a white crayon and you need to prep a few things ahead of time with your white crayon. Um, you need water and a paintbrush. And the paper that I'm going to be using is sketchbook paper, um, but any paper that's a little thicker than copy paper should work for this. Copy paper will work as well, um, but with watercolors, kids tend to add a lot of um, liquid to their papers and it may not last as well. Um, the paper can get kind of thin if there's a lot of water on there. So to prep ahead, you are going to draw some things that Pete might have stepped in um, to change his shoes different colors. And if you look on our blog, you'll see a couple of ideas. Most of them are food um, that, could, that you could draw and have kids guess what Pete might have stepped in. Um, so you're going to draw those things ahead of time on the paper with the white crayon. And when you add the watercolors, it's going to show what you drew through it. Um, so I'm going to start, I did one for every color, but I won't go through each and every one. Um, but just to give you an idea, I'm going to start with brown. Um, so take a guess about what Pete could have stepped in. And we're going to use our imaginations here because just like in the book, we don't really know how Pete came across those big containers full of strawberries or blueberries. Um, but we're just going to think, what could change your colors, your shoes a different color? Um, that would be brown. And I'll give you a hint. It's something that a lot of grown-ups like. Um, so I'm going to start painting the brown all over my paper. There's no wrong way to do this because the design is already on here. Um, and I'm just going to cover as much as I can in the brown. This makes this a good project really for any age because if you're just adding color to the paper, uh, there's really no wrong way to do it. You'll still see what design is made underneath. So if you guessed coffee, you were right. That's something brown that lots of grown-ups like and that could change Pete's shoes to a different color. So I drew a coffee cup on here and then when I painted over it in brown you can see the design. Um, so let's do blue. This one was really tricky to think of something other than what's in the book so that's a really big hint. Um, and I'm gonna start color uh, painting with the blue on this picture and with watercolors to spread it out you can always add a little bit more water but it's important to wash your brush off really well so that your colors are not mixing on your pictures and if you guessed that Pete once again stepped in blueberries to change his shoes blue you were correct those are my blueberries and let's do purple because that one's not in the book. What do you think Pete could step in that might change his shoes to be purple? Let's see. It looks like some grapes. Pete stepped in grapes to make his shoes turn purple. So if you want to, you can prep one of these for each color in the watercolor palette here, which is what I did. Um, and it's really fun. It's fun if you do a lot ahead so that when kids start the project, they can just go ahead and start guessing and working on it. And if they like doing it, they can also make their own with a white crayon. Um, so anything you draw with a white crayon, as long as you press down nice and hard should show up because it creates a wax resist. So you'll be able to see your design underneath the watercolors. The watercolors won't soak in. If you don't have a white crayon, try this at home. Another way you can do some Pete the Cat art is using some tape. Um, so I made this picture of Pete with his <laughs> big iconic eyes um, using washi tape. And we're going to paint with watercolors and then wherever we put the tape, when I take it off, you'll see has turned stayed white and the rest of it will change colors. Um, so I'm going to paint Pete's eyes first because his eyes are yellow and it's harder to make sure that we keep the blue away from the yellow. So I'm going to do that part first because if you mix yellow and blue, you end up with green and we don't want Pete to look like an alien. Um, so <laughs> these eyes are yellow. So I did that first. I added in the watercolor paint for Pete's eyes. 
Um, and next I'm going to add the blue. And this is also a neat one you can do um, with other things as well. Um, making a design with tape. And I used washi tape. It's really easy to take it off afterwards and it usually doesn't tear the paper at all. Um, but you can do this with other types of tape as well. If your tape is white, like masking tape, it might be a little harder to see um, the, paint, the tape when kids put it on. So they might have a harder time making a design, but the washi tape is nice because it shows up really well. Um, and I drew some of Pete's other features of the permanent marker so that it would not spread around when I add the water. If you use water-based markers, it will spread around a little bit, but I did one earlier and it actually came out okay. So if you don't have a permanent marker, if you don't want to use one, that's fine. Um, so I painted in my peat. It's Pete's blue with yellow eyes and it looks like this. And with kids, I would wait to take the tape off until it completely dries um, to make sure that the lines come out nicely. But I'm going to start taking mine off just so you can kind of see the effect. And it may not be perfect um, because I'm taking it off while it's still wet. Usually kids will add lots of water to their pictures. So you want to make sure that the paint dries, which doesn't take too long. Um, and if you have a bunch of these prepped, it might be another good way to go so that while they are waiting for their picture to dry, they can be working on another one. Um, so I started to take my tape off and you can see where it's white where I had put tape and it makes a beautiful outline of Pete and I'm going to leave the tape on the eyes because I think for now that yellow needs to dry a little bit more or Pete will be turning green like I said. Um, so when you take it off you can see your Pete the Cat artwork. Thank you for joining us today for our Pete the Cat party, uh, and we hope to see you at the museum soon. Bye!